One of the simplest, easiest ways to get your gains moving forward again is to simply do this. Change the tempo of your reps. Now check this out. Fast tempo reps build muscle. Slow tempo reps build muscles. Those in the middle also build muscle, but they all work best when they're new. In other words, change the current tempo you've been using to a new tempo and watch things move forward. It's really easy. You don't have to change anything else, just change the tempo. This actually used to be one of my favorite. It's been a while since we've talked I about this. I do this music all the time. You used to, <laughs> what'd you say? You I used to do, do this music? with music? Yeah. yeah, man. That makes sense. <laughs> I was watching Seinfeld it's last night. Parallel. It was that, one of that, that famous episode where Elaine dances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All weird. <laughs> yeah. The, the yeah. kick. Yeah, the yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, dude, the kick it's in the thumbs. <laughs> it totally sells it. <laughs> I yeah. know. No, so this used to be one of my favorite things to do with somebody who's been lifting for a long time and you know they've under somewhat understand programming and they've and they they've been consistent they eat well all these things and they just haven't manipulated this variable yet and one of my favorite go-tos is because most of these people are trying to build more muscle uh hypertrophy right uh, is very few people ever follow a true 422 protocol and I challenge anybody who's listening to this. If That's you're in, a four second negative. Yep. Two, two second, second at the bottom and then two second back up, yep. which is what they would, what they have deemed the protocol for hypertrophy, right? right? Like that's the hypertrophy protocol tempo. And if you walk in the gym, nobody does that. And you yeah. actually do like count that you'll see like nobody actually truly does that. Everybody does. It like adds an element of difficulty that people don't expect. Yeah. yeah. And, Everybody's and, two second down, two seconds up, zero yeah. pause. Exactly. Yeah. And, and here's the thing you have to be aware. And you know, it's, and a lot of this is because the, the gym still is predominantly young men and young men have egos when they lift and nobody wants to lift, you know, 30% less weight because mm -hmm. they're weaker. They want, they'd rather put more weight on do a faster tempo and, and look stronger than everybody else. But if you're in the business of building muscle and you don't give a shit about if you're the strongest guy in the gym or not, but you care about, you know, body composition, changing your physique, changing your tempo to a four, two, two is one of the best things that you could possibly do. And you'll see most people don't do that. And even though you got to reduce weight a little bit, watch the strength gains. Well, here's, here's the deal. You'll, you'll gain muscle and gain strength and it changes the rep range for you. So take a weight that you could do 10 reps with. And let's say your normal tempo is like everybody else. So two, zero, two, right? Two reps down, no pause at the bottom, two seconds up, and then you do it again, right? That's everybody. Everybody mm -hmm. does that. Don't change anything. Just go four seconds down, pause at the bottom for two seconds, come back up as fast as you normally do. Here's what will automatically happen. You'll cut your reps down by like 30, 40%. Yeah. yeah. So now you're going, you just change, you've changed two variables by simply changing one. By the way, all these speeds, now there's, there's things to consider with the different speeds, right? Like you have to maybe go lighter. If you go slower, if you go fast, you got to have really good technique because risk of injury is a bit higher, that kind of stuff. But all that being considered... Uh, it, it's, it's the simplest, easiest thing to change that changes your programming. It's yeah. very simple. You can manipulate any one of those three factors, uh, in that timing. And I, I would argue even that uh, a lot of women I train like to, to get them to move weight fast is, that's another one is completely game changer Totally, because, uh, and so that's the thing is just kind of like picking up on your habits of like what you're normally doing and what you, f you tend to, to fall in line with doing because it's comfortable and it's what you're used to like, shake it up, like try that, that tempo switch. And it's going to, I'm glad you made that point, Jesse, because that's true. Because obviously if we were, uh, you know, maybe there is somebody who's out there who actually does follow a four, two, two, right? Like that, but it's rare, very, very rare. Or maybe they even follow a slower tempo, right? They're just very, very timid. So they go really light and they go really slow and controlled teaching that person to do something explosive is going to give them yep. the greatest change, right? Yep. Because it's the mo most unique or novel. That's the key here is to do something that's different from what you're currently doing. Today's giveaway is the RGB bundle of maps programs. Here's how you can win. Uh, when we post up this episode in that first 24 hour period, you post a comment. Also subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We also have a sale going on some workout programs. Every month there's a sale. This one's a pretty awesome one. MAPS performance is half off, and the Extreme Fitness Bundle of MAPS programs is also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Yep. Here's a game that I like to play. I like to go to the gym, and this, I think, is more valuable for people who are more advanced. In other words, you're, you're pretty experienced with your workouts. Here's a fun game. Put weight on the bar, 
that you know is relatively light for you. Then go have a sandwich. <laughs> and watch what happens. Yeah, yeah. You just see so who messes with it. It's fun. No, <laughs> no, no. Put a weight on the bar that you know is relatively light and then say to yourself, I'm going to make myself get pretty close to failure with like eight reps or something like that. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I'll put a weight on the bar that I know I could do like 20 reps with. And then my goal is to see if I can make it feel like I'm failing at 10. Yeah. And the way I do that is with my form and my technique and my speed. I'll slow down. I'll squeeze. I'll pause. Rather than adding weight to the bar, I'll make the weight feel heavier. Uh, and that has produced better results for me than just adding weight to the bar all the time. Now, adding weight to the bar is something that you want to do, especially in the first couple of years of your training. But after a while, adding weight to the bar isn't the best, necessarily the best way to progress. Yeah. Then it becomes like, can I make this weight feel heavier? And that has to do with tempo more than anything. Yeah, that's better in my game. I usually uh, take the weight. Uh, normally for my friend, I'll stack the same weight like in numbers, but it'll be in kilograms. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we see we see what happens. Just I actually, Sal, I actually, even with clients that, um, like we're just starting out, newbie gains are coming on. Um, I like to go this tempo route first uh, because – People tend to get sloppier with their form as the, as you increase weight, and it, yeah. then it turns into a just get the weight up off off right. your chest or just squat it out of the hole, and mechanics start to get pushed back. And I just think that really stressing mechanics for the first few years of your training is so important because if you lay that solid foundation of what yeah, really sure. good solid mechanics look like, I think you're better off. And you're and you're 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 hoping to make sure that you don't run into a lot of these nagging pains or uh you know poor muscle recruitment patterns because you got so caught up in the chasing weight thing and adding weight to the bar that your form has suffered so i'd, I'd almost always rather when i have a client and we we choose a weight that they're they're moving they're moving at and we're doing say we're doing 10 12 reps and they're getting stronger i could tell it's like okay i could go add weight to the bar or i could slow the tempo down many times i would go that route I first see that with yeah because yeah. then you can cue them more effectively yes. too and you can be like you know you want to grip the bar and and focus on bending it out or whatever like the cues you can kind of like work through as they're slowly bringing the bar down and, and pressing it up you, you have a lot more opportunity yeah, there to I, make those micro adjustments i also love this this tip within a set too when you choose a weight that is easier than you thought it was going to be. Exactly. So you start to make it feel harder. Yes. Yeah. And so like I'd have clients sometimes where I, I'd put it on and, and it's okay, we're doing 15 reps. And, and, and I, we would, I could tell by the time they get to 12 and 13, like, oh shit, I underestimated. Yeah. I could have went, I could have put 10, 15 more you pounds start easily. Pause and slow down. So then what I would teach them is like, hey, instead of like stopping the set and then add, adding weight, just slow way down. Take those last two or three reps and really slow the tempo down to make 15 reps really challenging that is a really good solid technique that i don't see a lot of people use they they are there they've been told or they follow a program and it says oh it's 15 reps and so they they choose a weight they think is is and is right and they either underestimate or overestimate yep. what that is and then it's like listen you could you can go on the lighter side and when you realize that you're going to get to the rep range whether that be 12 15 whatever the desired rep range is in the, in the program and you realize it's it's too easy or it was too light then then just slow it way down and make those last three reps really challenging. I just had a, if it's so funny I totally forgot about this I just had a guy so I work out in the morning uh, and if I go to a gym there's one gym that I typically go to and in the morning crowd typically is pretty consistent so if you've worked in a gym for any period of time you'll notice that the 6 a.m crowd is is always the same people so this is guy that I see and if I go four or five days in the week, I'll run into him at least two or three days. So he's there pretty consistently and we'll say hi to each other, whatever. Anyway, he came up to me the other day. So I've now seen him, you know, if I go consistently to this place, because sometimes I'll work out here or at home, but I've probably seen this guy now over the last two or three years, right? So now we say hi to each other. It's all cool. So he came up to me and he goes, I got to ask you a weird question. I said, yeah, what's, what's going on? He goes, I've noticed that you'll do the same exercises with half the weight sometimes and sometimes with twice the weight. But it always looks hard. He goes, what's the difference between when you're so much stronger and so much weaker? I said, it's not that I'm so much stronger and so much weaker. Sometimes I choose to make the weight feel heavy. Sometimes I choose to make the weight feel light. And he goes, how do you do that? So with my form, technique, and concentration. Sometimes the idea is to move the weight 
And so I'm focusing on the the movement itself and really getting everything to fire and and just yeah. move the weight. Sometimes I'm like, I'm going to go half the weight. I'm going to try and feel the muscles. I'm going to fire make it, every muscle fiber possible yeah, with this yeah. lift. And he yeah. goes, wow. He goes, you can do He goes, because it looks hard every time. He goes, I thought it was like, had to do with your diet or whatever. I said, no, it's just how I how I'm approaching the workout. And sometimes I want to go heavy and sometimes I don't, but I'm always training with an appropriate intensity. And it really has to do with how you concentrate. This is definitely a, a bodybuilding uh, attribute or skill that a lot of- 100%. Body, like bodybuilders are really good at this. Really right? good. Bodybuilders are really good at They'll taking, take a lightweight- Yeah, they'll take an it. eight pound dumbbell and just burn out their rear delts by- Not just, by doing a million reps. Yeah, yeah. Just by just really concentrating and slowing it down and po po pausing in the flex position and the stretch position and- so uh, th there's definitely a skill and tremendous value to that, being able to target an area and to be able to make a lightweight feel super, super heavy. Yeah, well, I mean, think about the longevity with your routine when you can, we can, when you can do that. If yeah. the only way you can get a good workout, that's why I said this is such a good tool for people who've been working out for a while, because after a while, like putting 300 pounds on the bar, like... Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, I want to get a good workout, but I don't want to play with 300 pounds right now. I want to be able to do this with 150 pounds. It takes pounds. a toll on your joints after it a while. It could take a toll on your joints. And if my form and technique is off a little bit, that you know, whatever, and it, it'll send, it'll stress my CNS differently. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a skill. But when, if you, I, I bet you, and I'm sure this test, these studies exist. If they did a study on a bodybuilder, I bet that bodybuilder will be able to fire as many muscle fibers with a lighter weight as they could with a heavier weight. And, and now, beginners can't necessarily do this because they right. don't know how to necessarily make right. this happen. Yeah. You know? But if you can build, if you, if, I mean, the muscle doesn't understand the pounds that are on, no. the, on the bar. It understands perceived intensity. That's right. And so if you can take a 150-pound squat and, and fool the body and the muscles into thinking it's three or 400 pounds. The, the adaptation problem, you're going to yeah. get, you're going to build muscle from that the same way that someone's doing the 300 pounds. By the pounds. way, if you, not, not that they're always the best examples, because I think the highest level athletes are terrible examples for the average person. But here's an example where I think this kind of makes sense. If you look at like the top bodybuilders, the, the ones with longevity, the Dexter Jacksons that have been training and now they're in their 50s, they competed in their late 40s at the highest level. And you compare them to other bodybuilders, uh, who also did very well, but trained very differently, you'll notice there's a difference in longevity. Like Dexter Jackson, still lifting weights, still looks good, still everything good. You know, Jay Cutler was very smart with his training. You got monsters like Ronnie Coleman and Dorian Yates who trained with the utmost intensity, not taking anything away from them. They obviously accomplished tremendous things, but the injury and the stuff that they, that they did to their body versus these bodybuilders with longevity it's a surgeon Abreu, another example. Like here was a bodybuilder who in his sixties, you know, Frank Zane, like in his seventies, they still look amazing. You watch them work out. They have the ability to take a light weight and make it feel heavy to their muscles. And now they have longevity in their training because throwing around super heavy weights at some point, you know, becomes like, okay, risk versus reward, you know, ratio. Yeah. Yeah. And is this, you know, making sense? Yeah. Speaking of which I got to make a comment on, <laughs> on this. And this happens every single time I go on a ketogenic diet. Now I'm not doing this for any, fat loss or muscle gain reasons or whatever. I do this purely for two reasons. One, I think for me, it's a good idea to cycle in out of, in and out of ketosis once or twice a year. Metabolic flexibility, I think is a good idea. I also notice cognitive benefits when I do this, which is the main reason why I did it. I, I just feel sharper, but I do notice that I do not really get sore or I don't seem to like the damage that it caused in my body when I lift weights on keto hmm. is so much less. Like as soon as I start bumping up my carbs, is that just the inflammation factor? Either the inflammation or the strength gains from the carbs and the weight that I'm using is heavier, but I feel like I could do way more volume, way more frequency, not feel any soreness versus when I eat uh, carbohydrates where I'll get like this deep soreness sometimes, which is really interesting. And I don't know if you guys, what do you, you attribute it to? That? I think it, I don't know, it could be the reduction in inflammation hmm. that the ketogenic diet tends to pr produce, or it could be that I'm stronger when I eat carbs, so I'm lifting heavier and that's causing more damage. I don't know. What's his name? Dom Diagostino? Is yeah. It? Yeah. So I, I just remember him like uh, deadlifting uh, like a yeah. substantial amount, like, and he's just been keto for a long time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, same thing. Like low inflammation, but still had those like crazy strength gains. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I just don't get sore and huh. I just feel like I could train more volume, more frequency. I definitely noticed some performance drops. I think I know with carbs, I'm stronger, 
but I don't. It's definitely a tough one to keep up. What are, it's what weird. Are your, I don't get sore. What are your thoughts too on just okay? It, like it, the body has this crazy ability to adapt to like everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, our skin, our brain, our, our metabolism. Like there has to be some sort of an adaptation process that happens with diet, also. Of course. And there's got to be something as far as a novel stimulus that happens too, metabolically or digestively that happens. By I've always believed that. I've always believed that there's got to be some tremendous. There's got to be some value to switching up the way you eat occasionally just simply from that just that like evolutionarily speaking it makes perfect sense because you ate according to the season yeah. like there's there, you're not going to eat the same foods yeah that you will in the winter that you will in the in the, in the summer or the spring things pop it's up art, it's an artificial thing we've hacked you yes. know in, in in order to to provide uh you, you know abundance uh, when we so we don't starve, but yeah, I mean, it's, we always followed the seasons. We followed what Listen, was out there, what kind of plants were out there, what kind of animals I could, were available. I could go to the grocery store and I could get any fruit or vegetable I want at any time of the year, yeah. any time of the year. Yeah. Like there's never a season. You know what I mean? I could get strawberries 24 hours, you know, you know uh, 365 days a year, right? Yeah. Uh, we didn't evolve that way. So I, I think it does make sense, Adam. And I, I do notice most of the benefits of going keto, most of the benefits of adding carbs back in in that first three month period, two month period. Right. And, the, and that process. And then the, I start to kind of plateau. I feel that way kind of about almost every diet that yep. I've done before. Yep. Yep. Anytime I, I, I change something up, I mean, and we've, we, we used to talk about this a lot, right? At the beginning, when we first started the show, we used to talk, we all were playing with different diets. And you, I remember you used to do a vegan day every, every week. I believe you yeah. were doing it for once a week. We, we used to fast once a month. We all ran keto. And so, you know, something that I that I've noticed is that whenever I tend to have any sort of like structured regimen, and maybe there's some something to be said about that too. Like, you're making a change, so you're getting more structured again. Like, you you probably intuitively eat most of the time when you make a decision that yeah. you're going to. Oh, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go keto, or I'm gonna go vegan. Like now, all of a sudden, you bring structure back into the diet, and there's probably some value around that also, right? So well, I like, could tell you the two yeah. things that are the big difference besides the carbs being gone, right? So carbs are gone. I, I, the way I bump my calories up probably also, I would say does definitely increase my protein as well. Yeah. So when I tend to eat keto, I also tend to bump my protein because I'm trying to make up the calories that I'm losing from not eating the carbohydrates. And the, and the, it's, so it's coming from things like fish, meat, and eggs. There's got to be some other uh, benefit too, because I know it's, you know, lows in inflammation in the brain, but like running on ketones versus like uh, glucose. Yeah. Like it, there, there's, and it just seems like the brain operates better when you interrupt that, uh, that, that sort of energy that you're, you're introducing. It, it, it does. And then of course I've worked with clients, so they were keep going keto for so long. They started to get negative effects. We threw carbs in and it was like a miracle. Yeah. Even the zealots, even the extreme people like Paul Saladino. Yeah. Have you noticed the evolution of his diet? Like if pure oh, I know. It's like carnivore and fruit now. To now he's, to, yeah, yeah. Then some fruit and then some honey on top of it. And he feels, you know, better on it. And it's, it's true. There's, you could also look, you could, they talk about insulin sensitivity going ketogenic. You know, if you stay no carb for too long, you actually start to become insensitive. You start to develop insulin issues as a result and you have to throw some carbs in as well. So, oh, that's funny. Yeah. The thing that I noticed about going keto, I mean, I went keto way back when we used to talk about it a lot. I've never been the carb guy I was after that. So for the first time in my life- Changed your relationship. With it did, right completely did. And and the thing, the big takeaway I got from it, that my favorite part of keto is the the cravings. So somebody who is a major sweet craver and, and and loves carbohydrates and has always been challenged with hitting protein intake by switching to a, a higher protein, allowing more fat in the diet uh, and a lower carbohydrate type of diet, it's actually made the discipline around not reaching for carb snacks or sweets way easier for me. Way, way it's easier. Weird. I had the same experience with the carnivore diet. It, it was very much like I... like. At night, especially, was when I would get those cravings to go grab something that was like either like peanut butter, you know, chocolate, like something, you know, something sweet, you know, I'm like looking around. And uh, yeah, I, I just don't have that. I yeah. don't have that as much anymore. Do you do, do you get peanut butter, actual peanut butter and put it on chocolate or do you do Reese's? Yeah, bro. Actual peanut butter on chocolate. On chocolate? Yeah. And is it Hershey's? Is it just plain old Hershey's yeah, chocolate? Yeah, probably. Well, no, it's like, um, I mean, it's a very, you ever heard of like Tony's? 
Like it's Tony's Chocoloni. Fun. They're so good. Dude. Yeah, dude. So that's the one. So my wife is a. Now chocolate. you're gonna get me back on the chocolate train, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds really bad. Bro, that's, the most, <laughs> that's the only girly thing about you. I know you like chocolate so much. <laughs> my hey, my I, Valentine's Day's too. coming up. I picture so. him eating it too, like this, like the tub between his legs, and he's fucking <laughs> <Exactly>. scooping <laughs> the peanut butter. He bites the chocolate like this, and he. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You're probably right. Do you put the chocolate? Yeah, I'm watching on my it? Discovery Channel Hold show. On. Yeah. How do you? How do you, do you eat put it? the Let's peanut go. butter on the chocolate, or do you bite the chocolate, eat the peanut butter? Bite the chocolate. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. And it puts a spoon. Why would I smear it? Katrina's a dipper. She's like, she's not a chocolate. She's apple, apples, and peanut butter is like her. So good. Yeah, that is like one of her favorite snacks ever. But or cinnamon is good. You know what's really good for people that have that that have that craving or struggle with that? I actually think the little individual packets was one of the smallest things, smartest things ever. They have those little dip packets. Oh. Like I think Jeff makes them. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. They and they come in the and they're already measured out so you know how now, many calories you're getting and they're perfect for dipping and then it's like because one of the things that's dangerous is anytime dipping that, i need to lose weight i'm just no peanut butter no like that's <laughs> you it's drop weight 100 yeah that well alcohol of course, how many but, calories of that are you, well hold on are you a ton. are you You've a, seen what i put in my protein shakes yeah, yeah. oh really it's crazy yeah. what is it it's gobs you know it's, it's just, like it's like four tablespoons yeah yeah it's more like that's that. like 400 calories hold on more than that do you go do you do processed peanut butter like jiff and skippy or do you do like the legit like, I do the legit, but but I I love the 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 process. Can I just tell you, bro? Like, I didn't realize there was that big of a difference till I got married. My wife is like, she's like, no, we are not getting that crappy peanut butter. So we get the like where it separates. You have to fucking mix yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, oil. Yeah. That's that's the ass. Mm-hmm. Then the other day, I was at the grocery store and I bought the old processed shit. Yeah. It's very processed. In it's comparison. so processed, but it's, it's like yeah, candy yeah. peanut butter. No, it's, yeah, it is. it is like candy. Yeah, yeah that's it why yeah. it's not the same. It's not the same. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't feed that to my. How do they make it like that? It's no. like it's. Smooth, I have no it's idea. Different. But it's delicious. You it's, know, they've mastered it. It's very very. Different. There's some stores where you can like put the actual peanuts in, and then you can yeah get, yeah, yeah you can oh, actually get it like Nob made. Hill, you can do that. I do. Uh, that. They do that mm-hmm. in Nob Hill. Yeah, I know. There's some grocery stores I've been to where you can actually like make the peanut butter right there. Oh, uh, but yeah, yeah, I I mean I had I had to cut that habit out. That was a like when I was bodybuilding. That was like a go to. Like peanut butter was like the treat. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah. But the but the processed peanut butter, I I just did it the other day, and I'm like, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> yeah. I haven't had it in so long. This is like candy peanut butter. It's not actual peanut butter. It's like candy peanut butter. Yeah, it tastes so different. Yeah, it tastes different. Sure. It looks different. It mixes, spreads different. It's all the above. Oh, you, I could eat it like like a whole bunch of like it just spoons of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. you know the peanut butter talk. I cannot believe the virality of that. Oh, of the, conversation. P- of the PBJ? And I tell you what, I mean, when I was first giving you guys a hard time, I yeah, just thought like, oh, silly, man. dude. I bet you know what's funny about you, Adam? I bet you there's like 15 things like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like regular stuff that we all do. Yeah. That you have he figured out. He does it out. in a totally quirky way. Like yeah, always. Way. Are you guys like watching Adam. the people though? You know what's really interesting to see is that there's some people that are just like, oh, that's ridiculous. And then there's other people that are like open-minded. They're like, you know what? I've never done that this way. And then they're doing it and they're like- <laughs> I'm forever changed. I think well, well, there's always like a method to your madness yeah, yeah. in any of these things. And so it's like, okay, well, I can see why you think that way. It's just, I don't think like I that. I think it's weird that anybody <laughs> would be married to it. Who cares how you put your peanut butter and jelly on if somebody says something makes sense? <laughs> yeah, Like, right. why would someone get mad? Oh, I know. I mean, that's just, you probably don't like me. That's I right. You know how the, our audience is. Like, we yeah. have a, we have a, like, Maybe. you're a, if you, you're a, you know, a Sal fan, don't like yeah. me. You know what I'm saying? So All it's right, like, let me you, ask you this. <laughs> what, what sock do you put on first, left or right? Left. Okay. Left, yeah. Most people are left. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. It has, does that not have anything to do with right or left? I hand? have no idea. Now, I know you're yeah. ambidextrous, right? Yeah, you're, yeah. So I do. You're bi handed. Well, I try to. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bi handy. Um, yeah, no, I, I usually try to like put my socks on standing up. So I do the whole like balance oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Like the Starrettes actually brought that up in there. Uh, I actually, test. so th- I'm glad you brought that up because this has been on my mind a couple times. And and I, I, I catch it's myself do, doing more of this stuff as I've gotten yeah. older. And we talked about this one episode yeah, a long time old, ago with dude. Ben Greenfield. And I do think that there's something here like i don't know whether we like how we teach it or like whatever it's like daily things yes like there's always something in your day where you could choose the easier path yep. mm-hmm. or you could just make it a little challenging for yourself and it's and it's just good to do that and the things that i like walking upstairs i'll do weird stuff where i calf raise with a, like a little balance like it'll mm-hmm. i'll step up Wait, calf raise st- bounce I'll go I sideways I upstairs. yeah yeah Hold on a second. i wish i saw you do that. yeah i do stuff like, <laughs> like that. Adam, or or <laughs> when i put on socks i'll i'll balance on one leg yeah. while i put it on and then switch over and balance balance on the other foot and do that i, I do that with putting my underwear on things like that I I challenge myself stability wise 
because I've because I I've noticed I, I've lost it. If you don't if you don't train that shit, it goes. No, man. you're right. Hundred yeah. percent sitting on the floor. That's another one. Yeah, like yep. like sit on the floor. I just, I play with my kids on the floor. I, now I'm like, why am I uncomfortable on the floor? I need to I start know. doing more of this, bro. Yeah, even laying flat, like on your back on the ground, and then I'll I'll do basically the wall test, yes. but like flat, and just watch see even like press into the floor. Yeah. Like it just helps like yeah. counter a lot. Are of you what, are you guys uh, socks or underwear first when you get dressed? That's another one. Underwear. That, that's weird. So you go underwear first? Oh yeah. So I had a doctor. So you go socks first? Yep. Really? Hey, I'm about to blow your mind right now. I'm waiting. Okay. So okay, I had a doctor explain. tell me why you should always put your socks on oh, first. Because like foot fungus and shit. If like that you're on the in, floor. especially if you're oh, in a gym. Well, that's different. You could carry the the a fungus that's different. on your foot, put on How your How many underwear. times do you have a jock itch? Huh? Uh <laughs> that's weird. Hey, I'm gonna get real personal. Hey, he puts it, <laughs> hey, he puts his socks on and then he sits he's naked, his naked like, ass on the bench. <laughs> to put his, socks ball, on. his balls are resting on the bench. I gotta take care of this. Don't worry though, no athlete's foot here. In the shower. Got gonorrhea, but I don't got no athlete's foot. No, I don't want to add gonorrhea. Goddamn. No, I think I don't think I've ever had that. I know I've had athlete's foot a bunch of times, maybe one time. So that's different. Okay, that is. I mean, that's like logical because you're inside of a gym, yeah, that's, and there's, that's, that's, that's different. A, but now I always do it like that because he yeah. told me that one time. Oh, see, I'm like, if I'm home, I'm not, you know. But I, you have, I, we've already teased me about yeah, that. I throw a guy. t-shirt. I throw a t-shirt on. And no, that's so no weird. bottoms. I'm like Winnie the Pooh <laughs> 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 or Piglet <laughs> or, or Donald Duck. <laughs> yeah. Is Donald Duck that or, way too? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah None yeah, of those yeah. characters. Or the were, Peanut guy. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. never wear pants. Yeah. You know what? I'm telling you, bro. The whole Disney conspiracy is real. All of them are naked from the bottom down. Oh God. What do you think they're trying to teach kids? Oh God. Here we go. So many innuendos and uh, phallic symbols and things in there. Weird. Trust me. Weird, bro. Hey, I gotta gotta take it. it. I gotta tell you guys a crazy story, dude, from my sister in law. She told me this morning, and I'm like, can I please share this? This is insane. So she's a nurse. She works in the uh, the emergency, but she also does like labor and delivery. And I know you're Courtney. Mm -hmm. worked as a nurse so you must have heard yeah my courtney does that you must have heard (laughs) so many crazy stories from her when she would come home yeah so she tells a story so oh this is insane i gotta tell you guys she was delivering a baby and uh the cord was prolapsed and compressed so she had to put her hand in and push the baby's head up off the cord and stay in there oh my god holding it until she was cut out. Otherwise, she would have died within minutes. She's all doing this shit. Baby might die. Mama's wow. freaking out. And she's in there. And she told me this. And I'm like, and it was. Dude, that's like, give me like PTSD. It took, for 12 minutes, she had to do this oh, until God. they could get to the get to the uh, the operating room or get the instruments oh, out. So the doctor Wow, that's wow. insane. And the, and I'm like. I'm like and Did she's that just like, happen like last night or the night before? What? Yeah, because she didn't reply to some texts. And then she gets on. She's like, sorry, guys. And she tells me this whole story. <laughs> busy, busy saving lives. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so I said to her, I said, wow, you, I said you, that's crazy. It's crazy because, you know, we joke around in the fitness yeah. industry. We're saving lives, right? But, but And I guess technically you could say that. But that baby and that mom, yep. if she wasn't there doing that, yeah. that, that, that baby wouldn't be here. That's I know so just all those stories, you know, Courtney would come home and tell me. And then also to just even like providing medication and like getting the right e- exact like dosage and like making sure all these things are like completely. That's why she's so attention to detail. And it's like, you know, now she kind of helps out with our company, does emails and things like she was like really like had all this anxiety and like all this <laughs> stuff about like doing work for us. And yeah. I'm like, you're not gonna kill anybody. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. you can relax. Yeah. This is by it's the way. Like, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> my sister in law's name is Kate Rothenberg. I want to give her a shout out. She watches the show. Your what cracks me up about your wife too is I know when you do your your peptide or whatever, she preps it for you. Yeah. So yeah. she sets it up like it's a whole medical. Oh, wipe. I remember when I had Adam and I were like Adam and I fighting like an old one. Yeah, I reused needles. You're like, did you use this? How long ago did you use this? Oh, give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't. She, couldn't, she can't even take that as a joke. Like, I know. She was like, ah, stressed I out. Have to like leave t- sitting Justin down and talking. Yeah. You need to talk to Adam about this right yeah. now. Yeah, and I'm all conditioned. Like, oh, this is how it is. Yeah. You know, everything is so you know, so clinical. So my wife Whoa. worked as a phlebotomist for a set for a little while, and so she's seen me do the sub Q or whatever. She's like, it's not at 45 degrees. Put it in the whatever. I'm like. Yeah, it works. <laughs> yeah. You put it in at the button. You're fine, bro. <laughs> you're okay. Of course, you're. We're freaking out every nurse that. I know. Here. I know. You're not supposed to do it. Right and now. listen, uh, our, right now, our, our partner at MP Hormones is like, shut uh, up. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. People. Hey, speaking of partners, shit. I have some. I have exciting news, right, to announce. Yeah. So this is somebody uh, that 
we have worked with for actually one of our longest uh like standing partners. We don't talk about it on the show that much because we actually didn't have a paid partnership with it. It was a company that when we first started uh, that we all fell in love with and we worked out an affiliate deal on day one. Now, over the years, uh, we've done well. We've performed from them. Now, over time, they've noticed obviously that there's like, man, there's just these random huge spikes that we get from you guys. Well, it's because we randomly bring it up in conversation when it comes up. We've never uh, formally like advertised with them before. And so this year they signed a contract to actually do paid advertising, which is great because this is a product that I still to this day, and it's been what, I don't know, eight years ago. It's like a big secret. Seven, Who's the company? Brain FM. Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brain FM. And we yeah, haven't, we've never, we've yeah, never yeah. done paid advertising with them before. They're paid advertising this year. And it's cool because that, that product is so fucking good. I, I have it on to, my phone yeah. right now. It's Always use it. Listen, so legit. it's, Magic. It's actually <laughs> no, no. Listen, it's yeah. weird. It is weird. It's weird. So they have figured out how to get your brain into different states that they've identified with alpha waves. Didn't we? Didn't we have the the founder on it and we talk did. about the yeah, science? We did. We did, mm -hmm. we did a long time ago. And right? it's really weird. So do you know what? Okay, I'll, he I'll, was he was talking about it to counter a lot of the ADD uh, medication. Yes, and, and like had like if I listen if I listen to focus. So yeah. focus is a category. If I listen to that while I'm working within about, it takes me about seven minutes. It changes my state. I yeah. notice I'm all of a sudden. My kids make fun doing. of me because I'll like, anytime I do any work, like I'll throw that on because it just helps me so, to stay right there. Can I tell you the best, the number one, like the thing that pops up for me with Brain FM, a success story for me personally, that was just, and I'll, well, so as I tell a story, you guys remember this because I know we all have a little bit of PTSD from this. <laughs> Do you guys remember that plane that we took from Spokane? Yes, yes, <laughs> okay. yes. It was okay. the worst plane that I ever had. We got on, was it a propeller plane? Yes, it, it was, was, right? It was a fucking chicken plane. And it was, yeah. we got on this plane. It was, it was late, right? Late at night. It was crazy storming outside. We get on this plane and we all joked about it because it was a tiny propeller plane. But like, whatever. It was only supposed to be, what, a two-hour flight or something like that? Not even an hour. Not even now. Yeah, yeah. Hour. We get on there and I swear, to, I am not exaggerating. I know I could be dramatic. This is true. You guys will all, you guys will all back me up. It was violently, yeah. violently turbulent. I mean, I, I if you didn't have a seatbelt on, you were you were messed. You I, were fucked up. I was laughing. I was like, "This is ridiculous." No, it was worse than like no, a bro. There coaster. were people yeah. on the plane that were crying. I heard yeah. there was a woman praying out loud. She was doing the rosary. Uh, someone vomited. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't have your seatbelt on, you were threatened. And I, this is the success yeah. story. I and I get anxious on planes anyway. First of all, I have a level of anxiety that's higher than everybody anyway. Yeah. Put me on a plane. It goes up a little bit. You put me on a plane. And it was like, dun, 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 yeah, dun. you might as well picture like uh, barnyard animals, like just flying yes. around in there and like Dude. crates. And, and I mean, <laughs> it was like up and down so violent that you feel like you're going up and down a roller coaster. That's how big it was. I had my arms crossed. I had my headphones on and I had brain FM meditate. And I swear to God, it saved me <laughs> yeah. the whole time I was listening to meditate. And I was just, and we were good. You know where else it works uh, that I've used even with you guys. If we share a room and one of you snoring, it drowns that out completely. Mm. So if you put it, so if you're ever like that, I, that's been a go-to for me. If I'm ever in a hotel room and I'm sharing a room with somebody else, if I put it on I between the two of us, first. it'll, it'll drown that out. Yeah. I used to use it for the dogs when we had the, when we had the dogs with fireworks and stuff like that, you could put it, by the door and it would drown out any of the fireworks noise so it calmed them down like crazy like there's a lot of science we use it with max there. anytime that we travel especially if we don't have his mm -hmm. nest with us or whatever like that we just fire up that we have brain fm on his ipad and all of our phones and so no and then i use it for focus if we're if i'm trying to get if we're working on something where we're having to do research or read or write a bunch of stuff down playing focus in the background light has been like it's one of the pro one of the companies that i use the most consider, yeah. like i said it's on my phone right now you know and since we've been working with them I, and i don't know how much you go through the i mean they, they've changed the user interface yeah. big time oh, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so the sleep one new, that they have music option if i'm in a car or on a plane and i can normally fall asleep pretty easily anyway but one of the secrets is i put brain fm on and i'm out like three four minutes and I'm asleep. Yeah, no, it's it's, that, a, it's an incredible product. Yeah, yeah, so I'm yeah. I'm excited that we're officially Sweet. officially officially partnered with them. I mean, we've always been working with them. It was something that we occasionally brought up every now and then, but they're uh, you know officially on the sponsor. Oh, I trip. wanted to say, Doug, maybe you could pull this gym up. So we're going to be at the Arnold Classic, uh, March. What are the dates of that? Let's find the dates. March first. March first. Yeah, yeah, March first. Okay. Two to four p.m. Pros Gym. Pros Gym. We're going to be at Pros Gym March first between two to four. Show up. We'll probably answer questions. Hang out. I'd love to see what this gym looks like yeah. 
on uh i'll give you the no thumb handshake why why do you do that i just a mess with people i understand i don't understand i want to see what this gym looks like it sounds like a pretty a pretty awesome place to work out yeah okay okay so it's a pretty it's a pretty legit gym this will be fun yeah this will be a lot of it's fun. not one that we went into last time was it because when we were out we were out there last we went time. to one last time we, we did and i'm trying to I'm, Doug, do you have pictures of the I'm, actual gym i'm inside? looking for it right now yeah. okay yeah, i'd like to see what the they sell apparel and stuff because it looks like it's kind of in the same area it does look like the same yeah area. i've seen some pictures of uh arnold being there and the rock and so they uh, that's like a bodybuilder gym. Through, yeah yeah i think yeah, that's the like one that's the one gym. we went into do you remember i'm pretty sure that might be it was yeah. it an old world gym Oh, I don't know if it was a world. And they have Arnold Passage as well. So you can't you find uh, a photo of the gym. Doug? I'm trying to find one. You know what you do, Doug? This is what you do. You type in Pros Gym Columbus, Photos. and then you go to and then you, you just go, go to, to images. images. Yeah. yeah, and then you'll. And then, speaking of working out in gyms, you guys know Doug's brother might be working with one of the Mind Pump uh, trainers, one of the trainers that went through one of our courses. Oh, no I didn't way! Know that. He was looking for a personal trainer, and so Doug went to our forum with the with all of our trainers so doug's got a little side hustle on our business he's gonna get commission yeah that's what he's doing i'm excited i'm excited excited to hear about this to see to see what his pro what it looks like for him yeah yeah no that's because these are good these are obviously trainers that listen to the show and we have them in the form okay i found a picture here okay this one on the right here uh i'm not sure if that's the same one there's also another one called the powerhouse gym nothing's coming up so maybe that's the one we went might have been the power oh yeah we don't see it didn't switch but that's what i see i remember going to a gym that and the building looked like the one that's on this picture. Yeah, yeah. That was either a, it was like a Worlds or it was a powerhouse. So yeah, maybe I think powerhouse sounds like it. Oh, yeah. oh no, wait, that that is it. The pros gym is here. The powerhouse is here. Oh, okay. No, so wait, wait, the, the powerhouse think, one is the one we went to. Yeah, the powerhouse. Okay. Oh, that's not the same one. I remember. Not that. the same one. Okay, that's not the same one. Oh, okay, right. so we're going to pros. Yeah, pros, pros gym. gym. Pros D- gym. Doug, your brother. What are his fitness goals? Do you guys have similar build genetics? I mean, like, he deal? actually has better genetics than I do as far as building muscle. Really, he was always one that could put on size fairly easily. He's been very much into uh, endurance type type activities. He got into long distance cycling and. He's of the mindset too. He's one of these, you know, no pain, no gain guys. Oh, yeah. He likes to really push things to the limit. And I've been encouraging him for a long time. Like, just do some resistance training. Just, uh, you know, stop, change your mindset a little bit yeah. about it. So he's open to it. Awesome. He's going to try it out. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, that'll be exciting. So I, I, I did. I posted on the forum for all the trainers and uh, said to anybody in this area. And they, a couple people, you know, oh, raise well, their hand and here Can we go. Can we um can we order the Apple goggles? As Why? A, as a no, company I expense. Want to mess with them yeah, we'll have to figure out how to. I've to been kind of since we talked about it. I've been kind of like searching around like the different applications and stuff like that. What can we do? There's some cool stuff. There is some cool stuff. Like so what? I mean, I know none of us are like big like F1 racing guys, but I saw yeah. the F1 racing feature Bro, where you, you know can you, be. You can think about this for a second. I'm, hold if on, you're real F- quick. How much money do you spend on things that you don't use after, <laughs> after a week? <laughs> I know, like the Oculus was fine. And you know he does. He doesn't. He doesn't do it on his own anymore. You guys notice he pulls everybody in. I know. I bought those Oculus. Yeah. I think I used it once. Yeah, see, yeah. and whose idea was it? I mean, yeah. I I still use it with my kids. I'll be honest. Oh, okay. yeah, well, you, you were go. you were using it at the party the other yeah, day. Yeah, so, yeah, and yeah. I, I, my dog didn't chew mine up. I do still use mine. There's been a couple of times where I wish I had them. Maybe I'll buy your guys's from here. So I I, uh, I definitely would still kind of use it, not a lot. So could you play it. a lot of games so on this? Like, do you the sit down and pretend that they give us? No, no, one? it's not even like this. it's literally for respect just watching. <gasps> so you're watching you're watching oh, the the race on TV because you can see through the goggles. But then, like in your peripheral, like so down here below is the is a virtual view of the racetrack and so the you cars can look down, see the top yeah. view. So yeah. So yeah. I'm like watching the TV like everybody else is, but then down below I can kind of glance down and I can see uh, like a bird's eye view of the whole track and where their cars at, are. So just so some, it gives you another layer dimension. Yes. Of at what happening. point do you guys think, or if at all, do you think watching TV with friends and family is going to be that where everybody has for sure goggles on for it's, sure, it's gonna, it's especially gonna if you're going to be able to interact. Well, I mean, to, imagine we're all watching the same thing. But they have to make it feel like you're still sitting with people dude because you don't want to be isolated. it is here's yeah. the it potential is that i see though too is like skill acquisition because they have like apps where you can learn music and it, it like literally lights up a, a key on the piano and it'll show you exactly oh, like yeah. it's it's right here and you push it and you do it with timing almost like it's a game and then i mean they have stuff like that too where eventually i guarantee like instead of watching a youtube video about how to fix something 
You know, they're going to have like actual like you know, it's, animation listen, is helping you. Did you? Uh, did any of you guys ever watch the Gran Turismo movie I told you to watch? No. I did. I watched you it. Did? Yeah. Good, right? Mm -hmm, That's great. Is that not fascinating as shit that a kid is like self-taught on video games is now like a fucking F1 race, like racing you, cars and stuff is crazy. You know what I'm it's thinking nuts. about with these, go with these goggles or whatever? Imagine the how the access now to hyper talented surgeons right. or people that have to do intricate work they could put the goggles on right have a you know a machine that follows their movement to exactly and they could operate yeah. from a distance which but they've already done that by the way they've already done that with technology yeah, that's the not gesturing is really interesting so imagine that like you need the top heart surgeon or whatever can't afford to fly to but boom, they'll okay. operate on you virtually. So here's here's the hilarious one that I saw though that I was like, oh, this this could be really interesting. Like how people use this is the deep fakes where basically oh. like <laughs> with your face, I could turn you into like Matt Damon, you know? Like it'll the face will just like Why augment over me? your face and you'll talk. And I'm just like, I'm sitting here with Matt Damon. But now let's Stop let's Adam. imagine like <laughs> it's, I I right imagine now, it's your wife and it's like, oh, but maybe you're Somebody hey, else right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, bro, that's going to cause so many fights. That's going to cause so many fights. Why are you doing it with the goggles again tonight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know why. <laughs> what the hell? My, honey, I put your goggles on. Everybody looks like Denzel Washington. What the hell? Oh, going? my God. <laughs> oh, man. I will, it, that'll you, be interesting. That's not cool. That's, I don't know. Dude. That's not cool. Bro. I mean, it's better than going out and doing it, right? I'm, I mean, come on. Is it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's it, it adds a new wrinkle. It's a little weird. It is. You know it's going to be used that I way. I feel so uncomfortable with all for... of this. It's so weird. Like, you know, it's... the direction we're moving is so... Yeah, no. And we make parodies of it because we know it's weird. Like, Wally, the movie Wally, when I first watched that, it made me very uncomfortable because of... And it was uncomfortable, it, not because it, it was a cartoon. It feels too accurate. Yes, because it was like, ooh, I could see that happening. Yeah. It made me feel super uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, it's... You know, I wonder how many people are going to adopt this, like, just you were wearing... Right now, it's it's really expensive, right? It's like 3500 or something like that. Is and it's that all what big, big and it's a wire, mm -hmm. but you know that's going to change. Yeah, that, it all, that technology is only going to get better to where, you know, we're only so many steps away from it being contacts. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Oh, like, contacts in your eye, and no one even re re sees it or knows it's in there. Like, that's not far talk from about that. Talk about, uh, like, augmenting your senses... So that you're more like a machine. This is so sci-fi. Where I oh, could look far away and I could easily focus in with this. So this is what changes the lens we, of reality for you. A, a couple oh. of years ago, we brought you're up like a we brought up this conversation, and the and the conversation I I, I, I propose to you guys is is it going to be AR or VR first? And the 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 prevailing theory is that AR is gonna is of going course. is is it not VR? Everybody's talking about VR. And VR was the big hype because it doesn't interrupt your lifestyle. Yeah. Well, not just exactly. that, but VR feels fake, whereas this just feels augmented and yeah. better enhanced yes like, yeah. Exactly, yeah exactly Bro, it's just enhanced think about that. current life think about where this is going to go you know that there's there's already apps and technology that can read a person's facial movements and gestures that you can't necessarily pick up on and tell you the likelihood that they're lying yeah you imagine wearing some shit like that, talking to someone, oh, where were you? Tell me again. And then you think there's a 75% chance that you're lying or whatever. <laughs> yeah. you know? Turn your machine off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Do I look Did you guys see the other? So <laughs> Put your goggles on. I don't know if I sent this over. I might have sent it to the YouTube group, Andrew. I don't remember. There's a there's a video I sent, and this guy is wearing this, uh, and it was on um, was it 60 minutes? It might have been 60 minutes. I can't remember. And he's wearing like a, a white earpiece around his ear connected to his jaw. And it's basically oh, connecting the internet to his brain, right? Oh, so, yeah. so they were asking him questions, like 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 really tough math questions and history questions and stuff like that. Taking like three seconds, yeah. To come up with and an it answer. took him a few seconds, and then he hears the answer and then processes it. It's like literally, sh like it's crazy. This is why. This is where we need yeah. philosophers. We don't need scientists yep. for this. We need philosophers because. The question is so not. We don't even need philosophers. They this is stuff that has been addressed in Stoicism. You could you that's could read philosophy. You, I know, but yeah. my point is, if you read Stoicism, the, it still applies to well, today. Well, what I mean by that is not like we need new philosophers, but we need philosophy to yeah. be valued because yeah. the question isn't can we? Because we're going to be able. Is this, to. Is this the MIT thing? What is forty five thousand six hundred eighty nine? divided by 67. He silently asks the computer and then hears the answer through vibrations transmitted through his skull and into his inner ear. Six, eight, one point nine, two, five. Exactly right. 
Yeah. So like, yeah. here's a good philosophy question, right? The story of the vampire that lives forever. Okay. If you could live forever, only philosopher or somebody could think this would, would be able to answer whether or not it's a good idea. Scientists would just say, do it. How long does it take you to be evil? Yeah, or lose your mind or like, is there, does it change the value of life? Like these are all questions that we need to ask. Yeah. Having access to all of the recorded information instantly in your brain so that you think it's your own thought and being able to augment your ability to the point where you're limitless is well, that's is that a good thing? Problem is we're not made up that way. We're made up with we will keep going until we get burned, and then yeah. we'll then we'll then we learn it's <laughs> yeah, not. I mean that's just how we are. Know, we, we're designed so, and we're so far from living forever. So it's like, hey, let's increase it by twenty percent. Let's increase it by thirty yeah. percent. Let's live for fifty percent longer, and then then we'll wait until we realize like, oh shit, that wasn't a good idea. Look at what's happening Damn, to society. Yeah. So. But that isn't that wild where we're at? And I'm like the the back to the Apple driving all that. Like it's pretty trippy to see what the, how far technology has come that a kid could never get in a car can learn how to drive in the virtual and then world make it to that level and then make it to the professional level and compete at the highest level. Like actually be good at what I mean. Yeah, that but is you know crazy. what? Though? Let's, let's be clear though. Yeah. Okay. The the game definitely was his training. Okay, but mm -hmm. what you're also dealing with is a highly gifted individual because someone may be listening, be like, "Oh, this is how." Well, I yeah, can it's not going to happen for everybody. No, yeah. bro. Yeah, I, no, I, he, had he trained the? Here's the real question. The real question isn't could did he was he is it was he able to do it with this video game? The question is, would he have been better had he done it in real life, the conventional way? Yeah. And that's the question that we don't know. Well, I, well, yes, it is. I mean, here's the thing that you know is that that's what makes this so cool is that it makes it accessible to like to get into race car driving is not cheap. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm so it, it, it already... I always wonder how the hell the kids well, get Well, that's why that. I'm... I'm Yeah, I, I seriously... I don't know if it's been since like the pandemic, but I've seen more like virtuoso guitarists and, and yeah. musicians like that have just locked in on the skill that to where I'm like, wow, there's just so many really talented people out there that... Uh, just emerged all of a sudden. I don't know if that's just like Imagine, me, it, it, me and my own, you know, perception, but yeah. it's, it seems to be the case. I want, you know, with, with fitness, it's going to be very interesting as well. Although you're always going to have to contend with human psychology, which is always going to be the roadblock. <clears throat> always, always, always. Yeah. But if beyond that, um, I mean, I could see just endless potential. Like imagine, you know, having something that literally shows you the intensity of muscle contractions yeah, yeah, while you're exercising. Yeah. I mean, I think we already seen an example of that with the, the tonal mirror bullshit. Everybody was so excited about that. Oh, yeah. Human talking. psychology is yeah. always going to stop. You hear anybody talking about that bullshit anymore? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where are you all at now? It's just so funny. I mean, everybody. Remember, they got valued at a billion dollars. Oh, my God. Everybody was like, so, oh, it's the next. It's, the, it's like, it does all this cool shit. It's you like, yeah. You still got to get people to work out yeah, consistently. Yeah, no. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know if there's going to. The, the thing that will have to disrupt that space or our space like that is like a pill that fuck you take and then you're buff. A yeah, pill right. you take. Like as far as like. So all talk the, about a philosophical question. Yeah. People are going to realize very quick when that's invented that it is not going to give you the be same. a terrible idea. It's benefits. just like, well, that's what's scary about this. Like, like this, you know, uh, the MIT thing, right? With the the, you know, if if you could it's skip, acquired if you could skip all the learning and the you know yeah. reading and all to, to get to being brilliant. You don't need to do any of that because you automatically have a built-in Google in your head. Is that a good thing or not? I yeah. I, I don't even need to test it to know You're it's a right, bad idea. As of right now, yeah, that the Neuralink. I mean, we're kind of <laughs> yeah. We're gonna the first see that human. Soon. You see the first human uh, test have been done with Neuralink. I, I Actually, had a human test it. Yeah, which is proof. Yeah, unless you could download wisdom. But for now, it looks like the formula for wisdom is time plus mistakes and, you know, trying over and over yeah, again. Yeah, you have to test it. Uh, but if you could obstacles. download wisdom, then I guess you'd solve that problem. I mean, there is some, I mean, uh, there is some, some possibilities there, Sal, right? Like you brought up right there, like how, like, you know, AI will get to a point where you, I can have a conversation with Justin and it could be computing, oh, 70% chance he's lying to you. Mm -hmm. You could also have AI that could support like, this is 80% risk to do this. This is 20, you know what I'm saying? Sure, but that's not going to give you wisdom. Well, like wisdom is developed through yeah. time. Okay, so go through the wisdom isn't the right word for it, yeah. but I mean, you could- You, you could get the answers. Yeah. That's, that's about right. Well, yeah. well maybe you they just the get better at the, like simulating- like a, like they speed up that experience somehow by like simulating a lot of those obstacles that you have to or, work through or, like a video they, game. Or they put you in a fake reality where yeah, 10 right. minutes is like 10 years. Exactly. Right? That's up, what I mean. Yeah. It's, and maybe we're in that now, Justin. Mm. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and we just ended the podcast. Yeah, I just had to get to there. <laughs> hey, I got to tell you guys, the Juve light, guess who's using it regularly now? 
that so we in know my family oh of course i got a huge family so i don't care i had something else i want to talk about you but go ahead Let oh me know. my dad oh yeah so oh, my dad's dad, always really? my back my back my back and I, I hired him a trainer which has made a big difference Finally got him to use the juve regularly, and he's like he's sold. I he's think sold. What, I think back pain. I think what Justin shared is an even cooler commercial. What is, it? is the 49ers. Oh, did you see yeah. that 49? Did you, we send it to the YouTube channel, the <laughs> I, YouTube group? I like how you said Justin. He didn't know what he was going to say. What? Yeah, what did like, I do? He's like, what did I do? Which <laughs> thing? I did something brilliant. <laughs> Give some good Surprise yourself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I did say that. Yeah, no, that was a really cool commercial that they did. So, I mean, that's kind of cool to so see. So, what did they do? You didn't see it? No. Yes, you did. Didn't you? God, you were the worst about anybody <laughs> sending you anything. I'm honest, though. I'm telling you. You know what we got to do? I'm going to put in my phone number, Sal Stefano, and I'm going to send it to you as if you're sending stuff to yourself. <laughs> and then maybe you'll actually oh my watch God, it. Yeah. This is, Sal's going to be like, dude, they have a whole oh, recovery lab. Myself, this, is awesome. this is the smartest thing I've ever heard you say. I'm like, hey, I have a great idea. Yeah. I'm so brilliant. I sit my Myself, it's, I'm going to do that. And your phone's going to be sound. You're going to you get the AI voice thing and call yeah, me at my voice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll definitely listen if it's me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tell yeah. me what to do. <laughs> Shut up. You're stupid. No, man. Justin shared it with the group. And I think he shared it with the YouTube group too. Did he share it with you guys, Andrew? Did you guys get it? You, oh, uh, you, yeah, you have, I saw no, it. I, think they I saw it. it. I think it was just with you guys. Yeah, it's cool. It's right here. Yeah, so, I I, I, great, uh, great ad for them, man. I oh, thought it was. I, know. I don't know. I love that. Of course, out of all the teams, I'm like, of course, partial to this. I believe that we've got a great staff that can find the right players. And recovery is a huge part. Oh, wow. We found that red light therapy and then furthermore, finding the right company in June to provide that for our players is incredible on the road to recovery. And each week you go beat yourself up. How quickly can you recover? Boom. The best players learn how to do this, find all the resources. We've tried to provide that for our team. You know, I think this is a, a company who's uh, found lightning in the bottle with this thing. And That's good. Right? Yeah. So, cool. so this is why we need a tour. I, I remember when we first met with you, we all thought it was, well, this is weird. Of course, it's got a lot of science and data backing it up. Okay. And it goes back to the 70s or even 60s, even some of the data on this. But what's amazing is how far, like, like this is massive. They've it's gotten huge. so huge. Yeah, no. It works. Well, know. and you know, too, when, I mean, professional teams, they have the money, the budget, they have the, the resources, the people that are doing, that, that are yeah. looking into the most cutting edge stuff. Yep. And so, you know, when a, you see a professional sport team adopt something like this, you know, it's like, it's yeah, only They've done be, their homework. They don't promote yeah, like, yeah. hundred percent. They don't, they don't have time to Half like fuck thing. around with something that you sit in front of for 12 minutes. If it's, it's not, if it's not beneficial, those guys could be doing other things yeah. that are going to improve their performance or improve their recovery. And so if they've adopted that to do that, you know that that's something that's super valuable for the, the, the recovery for the athlete. So awesome. pretty cool though, right? Yeah. That's Shout out is is the is that is that am I reading that correct? This is the the prescript event that we're trying to go. Yeah, that's it. Okay, here. Yeah, so prescript is doing an event here at Mind Pump headquarters. It's going to be boy, I wish I had the date here. Yeah, uh, let's, let, let's see that's, if I can find well, I know what we did is I know that prescript is holding a certification course here, right? So Jordan is going to be doing that. By the way, Jordan if you're, Shallows, well, this he's like the, he's like one of the best in the space for. Yeah, like we've been really we've been promoting shit. Jordan for a long time, and like, as far as like the guy's absolutely brilliant. We call him Beast, right? Because he's like X Men Beast. He's just this big old buff dude that's super brilliant. And his certification course, a lot of our <laughs> coaches and trainers have gone through it. He's hosting it here. I told him to come down here. Why don't you host it here? We'll do like a meet and greet with our listeners that come in, that actually fly in, that actually want to come do this certification. So you'll be able to do it in person here the day before you'll get a chance to hang out with us inside the studio. So that was the idea was that our audience that will come in here. And I think he's also doing some sort of a, a, a discount too for our people. Right. So and Yeah, so, so it's uh, March 15th, 16th, and 17th. Uh, we're going to be meeting everybody on the 15th. There's going to be a swag bag that everybody's going to yeah, get, yeah, Mind Pump bag. merch. And we're going to do a live podcast for the first 10 people who sign up. Oh, okay. oh wow. Yeah. In oh, other cool. words, you can sit in and listen. Sit in and hang out with us. Now, the, the link, that's, is that the link right there? We need a better link. It's yeah, a, the link is not easy to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's pre-script.com uh, forward slash mind-pump-ps. L one, right, well, and we'll have it in that show notes. So remember you can that. Yeah, yeah. On the video, on the guys wrote that down, look, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right, look. There's a company called Sleep Breakthrough that makes a drink called Berry Dreams. That is a pre-bed drink that has been shown to improve the quality of your sleep and also help you fall asleep faster. Now, it's not like a sedative; it won't knock you out. 
It's all about improving your natural sleep. So you have better stages of sleep, better recovery, better memory retention, and of course, a better hormone profile. Go check them out. Go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash mind pump. By the way, you have to use the code mind pump 10 to get that discount. All right, back to the show. First question is from CMOS23. Other than serious athletes, shouldn't 95% of training be unilateral so we can fix muscle imbalances and then avoid them in the future? You know, this is actually a pretty good question. I can see the rationale behind why somebody may think this way. Now, there's the reason why I say no to this particular question, which is 95% of training. By the way, if you only ever train unilateral, you'd be totally fine. Yeah. There's, there's, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that whatsoever. You could do that. But you would be missing out on some potential strength and power gains that come from bilateral training because you're able to generate more force through the central nervous system when you're operating bilaterally. So you'll always be able to bench press more on a barbell than you will with two individual dumbbells, for example. You're limited we, by load. That's right. We literally just had somebody, call a caller on one of our our last quads call in, and he's been listening to the show. I think he's listened to every single episode. He's gone through most all of our programs, but he's been working out from home and had incredible results, right? So he's seen all kinds of great results, and he's had 100-pound dumbbells, dumbbells that go to 100 pounds. He's modified all of our programs to do it at home. First time ever he got a gym membership and he's blown away by the gains. He saw himself put 15 pounds of muscle on. He saw his deadlift, his bent, all these moves go up in strength. And he's been training for a long time. And he, the reason why he called in was because, could this be possible? And our answer was that that's exactly the benefits yeah. of barbell training can be. And so by loading barbell training has tremendous value for building muscles, speeding the metabolism up, power, strength, all these things. Now, if I had a client who didn't really care about any of those things and they literally hired me for like at longevity and I just want to be strong enough and healthy enough and feel I love, good. Yeah, yeah, I feel good. I love unilateral training and I have no desire to get that much stronger. I just want to be strong enough. Like then, yeah. But if I had that same client, we hit a plateau and they're like, man, Adam, like we haven't been gaining any more strength and I'd like to get a little stronger. And it's, we've been training for two years and all unilateral. And I go, well, we could pick up the barbell and we're going to see a nice little bump because we haven't, you haven't done that. Or are you content with where you're currently at? And we can also keep going that route too. So that's kind of how I would approach it. Yeah. I mean, it. You, you're going to stretch your capacity to produce more force bilaterally. That's just like a fact. Uh, and, and I know like even in the athletic realm, uh, some people have made arguments just for always doing unilateral training because, you know, in most situations, like you're in a split stance or you're just using one arm versus the other arm. Sure. Um, but to, to be able to train your body to, you know, maximize that potential of recruitment, uh, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to cap, you're going to maximize that most effectively by bilateral training and then going back to, you know, you It's training. all valuable. And even with the athletes, I would say younger athletes will get more benefit from bilateral training than advanced athletes who've been training for a long time. And where, in which case then more unilateral training makes sense. But why does it make more sense for the younger athlete? You're trying to build force and muscle and, and you maximize that with barbells a bit more than you do with uh, unilateral style training. Next question is from SLB Anon. Are two days full body training enough to still see results if you're feeling burnt out? Yes, yes. In fact, for the average person, for the average person who wants to maximize their time, who has a busy life, is not doesn't live for the gym, but they want a faster metabolism, they want to build muscle, they want to feel great, two full body training days well-programmed, with appropriate intensity is perfect. It's perfect. In fact, 90 throughout my entire career, well over 98% of my clients train this way, two days a week. In fact, Doug trained two days a week with me, got his deadlift up to 400 pounds. There's so much you could do with two days a week before you have to add a third yeah. day. Yeah. Now, the question is if you're feeling burnt out, you can even overtrain two days a week. It depends on the person, but two days a week, for most people is is great. I wanted to address yeah. that part cuz if you were feeling burnt out, I actually might push you in the direction of like a MAPS 15 
uh, like over, like like twenty minutes a day. Yeah, minutes a day. Because that's when if I'm feeling burnt out, uh, sometimes a two a full body workout for an hour, right? Too much. It, is it feels too much? But doing two work two exercises every day is actually feels a lot easier and better on my body. So maybe consider that, right? And both are are, are incredible. You could absolutely do Maps Anabolic two days a week, see tremendous results. Um, you could also do the MAPS 15 routine and actually get uh, just as good of results also. So I would consider that like if you're, if burnt, if you feel burnt out and that's the reason why you're scaling back to two days a week, maybe consider actually doing more days in the gym, just way less intensity and volume. Sometimes the body will respond even better to that. It probably a little every day is probably better than a lot. Uh, you know, every other day or twice a week, even if you control the, the volume, Yeah. you know, Next question is from Cassandra Sieg. What do you recommend for rotator cuff pain? Mobility, rest, strengthening other areas to support? You know, rotator cuff pain for in the context of somebody who works out regularly because the, the you know, typical deconditioned person, you're looking at overall weakness, overall, you know, need to improve or increase your strength. Um, and your pain is coming from just general overall weakness. With the person yeah. who works out consistently, this is more of an imbalance, or to put it more clearly, this is this You're is too more to do. In one direction. Yeah, this is more to do with uh, a strength imbalance. Okay, so when you look at the traditional lifts, bench press, row, pull ups, overhead press, you have these really big, strong, prime moving muscles: the chest, the 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 the, the deltoids, right? So the the front head, the side head of the deltoid, the lats for these back exercise, rhomboids, even for the shoulder blades, like really strong, big muscles. And then you have like the infraspinatus, supraspinatus, subscapularis, you know, the teres minor. These are these little muscles that attach along the shoulder blade. It's called the cuff and they, and, and on the humerus. So that's the, the long arm of the bone and they maintain stability. They keep your arm from twisting off or yeah. from moving in the wrong direction. Cause Keeps if you look at that pocket, yeah, if you look at the shoulder joint, it's like the, 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 the bone of the arm moves in the shoulder joint. And then you have the shoulder blade that also, so it's a very it's complex floating. Joint. It's a very complex joint. It's one of our more complex joints because we evolved to throw with accuracy. And at least that's the argument. So when these stabilizers can't stabilize the weight that you can handle with these prime movers, these big prime movers, you develop problems. This is why big, strong people yeah. uh, will all of a sudden hurt their shoulder because they they grabbed a shampoo bottle wrong. Symmetry then performance. Yeah, map symmetry. Yeah, yeah, symmetry and performance. I mean, it, to me, this is and this is actually more common with people that have been lifting a lot. I, I used to get power yeah. lifters. I'd have power lifting clients all the time because they've gotten so strong in one yeah. direction on these bilateral type of movements. And they just haven't addressed unilateral and stability stuff, right? This is yep. the op this is a, why the first question, the argument of could you do unilateral work forever? This is one of the positive things of someone who trains unilaterally all the time, and especially and rotational. Less likely to hit so this. you got to constantly assess your stability and, and your mobility and things like that as you're getting stronger, so you can uh, balance that out and complement it. Because yes, you you could get to a point where you can accelerate so quickly with your throw, or I could like lift so much more weight, uh, but if you don't have that. That stability and structure in place to keep your joint healthy, then it all goes. To Look, health. think of it this way: you have a truck that's pulling a trailer. Uh, the the strength of the truck matters up until you exceed the strength of the attachment to the trailer. Once the trailer attachment breaks, you can get as strong as you want with the truck; it's going to break. You can't pull anymore. This is what happens when your stabilizers don't match the muscles that move things. So you have to keep up the strength. So you can actually have strong stabilizer. In fact. The average lifter has strong stabilizers compared to the average person. They're just too strong in the other area. And this is also why when we originally started creating all the programs that we did, that we have the, the anabolic, the performance, and aesthetic was was designed to be like ran in that, in that order yeah. and that you could recycle that order over and over is because we're always coming back and addressing this with like unilateral and rotational work in performance. And so even though anabolic is very much so sagittal plane focused, aesthetic is very much so focused around building muscle, we want to make sure we always have that performance component in there so things like this don't happen next question is from fit life with gen 13 how does exercise and strength training improve brain function i have a client recovering from meningitis and gets exhausted from focusing on movements and balance i know it's good for brain health just not sure about the science behind it well uh first off the simple very easy part to understand and, and the, by the way that there's some studies that have been done on this where 
the initial strength gains that somebody makes. So when you first start working out, you'll notice like from one workout to the next, like, wow, that's a huge improvement. Like I could only do one. Now I could do five, right? You don't see that much later on, but they've tested. Are there changes in the muscle, the muscle fiber, or is it the central nervous system? Central and of course the brain is the hub system. of the central nerve. It's the central. And most of the gains you make in the beginning, especially are the central nervous system. All right. So what's happening? Well, that your brain is controlling movement and muscle contractions. It has to develop and build along with your muscles. And as your muscles build, so does your brain. Your brain is attached. To, in fact, if you lost the limb, the, the part of the brain that is connected to that limb, or if you lost speech or you lost your eyes, you would start to potentially see some atrophy or some changes in that part of the brain. So it literally builds the brain because the brain controls the body. Now, strength training is amazing because it's so dynamic and moving in so many different directions and I can rotate and I can go forward and back and whatever and I have to balance. So it requires arguably more brain development in that sense. I think we forget that. We think it's like automatic, but like as you're you know, a child and you're having to go through all these developmental stages, like you're That's literally teaching your brain, uh, you know, these patterns and, and you get better at them and then you get stronger and at these muscle contractions and it all kind of follows in that alignment is the same thing with training is, you know, we have to really like introduce it and, and introduce it more frequently and get that pattern established. So we get stronger and we send an effective movement pattern. Is it a fair comparison to say it's like reading, uh, for your vocabulary? Hmm. Like doing re reading more is going to you learn more words. And you're going to learn more words, and increase your vocabulary. Your ability to strength train is like your body's ability to communicate. That that communication itself is going to yeah, yep. strengthen the brain. Well, it's motor kind of similar. Yeah, in that I always fashion. thought of it like a language. Yeah, for and sure. Justin yeah. used a great example of motor skills with children. When they're assessing motor skills on children, they're not assessing your kid's muscles necessarily. They're right. looking at brain development. Right. So that's on that's very on the very surface level, and that's big. By the way, it's, it's not just you know imagine that's not a big thing. But then there's more, right? There's your body's ability to utilize uh, energy sources like glucose more effectively. Look, al you know, Alzheimer's, a lot of researchers now, especially, I remember when this was controversial, but now a lot of researchers refer to Alzheimer's and dementia as type three diabetes because mm -hmm. there's such a strong connection between your, between having issues with using glucose for energy, like insulin sensitivity or resistance or diabetes and brain dysfunction. The brain on a, on a, you know, weight per weight basis is actually uses a, a tremendous amount of energy. In fact, you ever seen the studies on chess players? Yeah. How many calories are burned? Calories yeah. burn is crazy. It's, it's the brain. So when your body can utilize energy more effectively, it works better. And that includes your brain. So there's also a lot of interesting research in that area. In fact, there's a study that I quote all the time from Sydney, Australia, that shows that strength training stopped the progression of Alzheimer's or seemed to. It's it, And nothing's been able to, sh to show that. That hasn't been like a medical intervention. Well, I mean, we think when you wiggle your fingers, okay, the muscles wiggle the fingers right here, but it's the brain that communicates to those muscles that allow that to do that. Yeah. That in itself is training the brain. Right. So if you're if you're trying to strengthen the brain, you lifting weights is, yes, effectively moving muscles, but it's the brain that communicates the ability to move those muscles. Therefore, of course, it's going to. By the way, people think that we take it for granted. The reason why it's taken so long for scientists to be able to get robots that move like humans is there's a lot of physics involved with oh, yeah. balancing and walking. And you ever seen the physics involved with like throwing a ball or catching a ball? Mm -hmm. Like your brain has yeah, to the process. Math. The oh, it's crazy. The amount of math that you do in order to throw a fastball it's, is incredible. It's crazy. So yeah. movement in general is one of the best ways to reduce, uh, you know, to, to prevent the reduction of brain function. Building muscle in particular seems to be one of the best ways uh, to do it. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have a lot of free fitness guides that can help you with your health and fitness goals. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam.